Boom. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, so like I said before, guys, um, so pretty much what Hourglass, what I'm about to go over, um, Hourglass is basically a robot. Hourglass is basically a robot, and it's basically 87% accurate. And what it does is, all it does is scan the binary options market for y'all, and it tells y'all what's the best trade ideas to earn profits off of for the day. It's real simple. Once you guys learn it, you guys are not gonna have to wait on a go live educator to make money. It's, no, it's very easy, very simplistic, and it's there to help you guys make money any time of the day. So when you learn it, you guys can be using it in the morning time, nighttime, afternoon, it does not matter. Because it's, uh, uh, yeah, once you got it, you got it, 100%. And um, what else I wanna tell you guys? Yeah, so that's that. So let's move forward, boom. Okay, cool. So boom, so now that we're here, when you guys go to Hourglass, it's gonna look like this, guys. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna look crazy, right? But it's not crazy. So with Hourglass, um, I'm gonna break this down. So when you go to it, let me exit that. Uh, when you go to it, um, on this side right here, you have what is called an alert panel. You're gonna have what is called an, an alert panel on the left-hand side right here. And if I'm going fast at any moment, let me know that if I'm going fast or not. So your alert, uh, your alert panel on the side, um, this is where you're gonna see all of your trade ideas. You're gonna see all your trade ideas on the side on the alert panel, right? So look, right here, I have a, 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 a little bar on the side where I can like drag it down to see all the currency pairs down and drag it back up, right? You see that thing on the side. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching y'all how to operate hourglass. Before we use it, we wanna learn how to operate it, right? So the alert panel will say I give you trade ideas. So one thing that you guys want to know specifically, where it says uh, green means, I mean, red means put. If you see it, col it's color coded on the side. If, the, if, the, uh, if it's red, that means it's a put. If it's green, that means it's a call. Call means buy, meaning we expecting it to go up. Put means sell, meaning we expecting it to go down. That's simple, right? So where, where it says symbol, where it says symbol, symbol, next to symbol is going to be a currency pair. Next to symbol is going to be a currency pair in each one. That's the first thing. Next to symbol is going to be a currency pair. Then under it is going to say type. Type is either going to say put or a call, but you're going to know it's a put or a call based on the color. If it's red, that means it's a put. And then where it says time ago, this is very important. Write this in bold letters. You're looking for trade ideas that says less than a minute ago, two minutes, or three minutes. If, it, if it's past three minutes, you're not looking for it no more. You're looking for trade ideas that says about a minute ago, two minutes, three minutes max. If it does not say that, you need to wait on the next trade idea. The thing with Hourglass, what you guys want to understand is this. Hourglass give you new trade ideas every single five minutes. It's a scanner. HFX, high frequency trading. It's like fast pace. So Hourglass is spitting out new trade ideas every single five minutes. So that's why I say there's no way that you cannot win an HFX leverage an Hourglass as a resource because it's giving you trade ideas like that. Every day, if you're not making money, that's on you. Listen to me. I confidently say this, I've been doing this for a minute. If you're not making money, that's on you once you learn how to use this, All right? So cool, if you got it, drop a one in the chat box below. If you with me, if you got it, drop a one in the chat box below. Drop a one in the chat box below if you got it, if it makes sense. Okay, cool, um, dope. Willow, you got it? Drop a one in the chat box if it makes sense. Okay, cool. So next, so now that you guys have that, I'm a, uh, so right here, it says 5M. 5M means the five minute time frame, right? Meaning every five minutes, you're gonna, um, the market's gonna rescan and give you new trade ideas. So it's say time ago, three minutes ago. You're, if it says past five minutes, guys, you're gonna wait 
You're gonna wait to at where it says five minutes and after five minutes, it's gonna give you a new trade idea every five minutes. You're gonna wait. If it say three minutes, just wait, just wait guys, just wait. So that's that. Next thing I wanna show y'all is this. I'm gonna show y'all how to operate it. So when I go to my chart right here at the bottom, I'm gonna have a circle. The circle at the bottom of my chart right here, this is how I refresh the chart. My minus button is how I zoom out. My plus button is how I zoom in. Plus how I zoom in, minus is how I zoom out. Before you take a trade, you need to make sure that your visual is always good for you to see. You can't make money if you can't clearly see a trade idea. So when I go to my chart, let's say I click on a different one. Let me click on this one. So go to my chart. Sheesh. I'm going to zoom in. You, you, you don't want your chart to look like this. You want to zoom in. Always have your chart look like this. And when you go here, you can like, and then on the sidebar right here, y'all see how I'm on the sidebar? I got the up and down black arrow. If I hold down and push up, it's gonna make it like that. It's gonna make it like that. If I push down, bring it in, it's gonna do that. I need to always fix my visual. I need to clearly see it like this, like that. And then if I take my crosshairs, the little vertical or horizontal line, right? Like this. And then I hold down on my chart, I can like drag it like that but I need to fix my visual. And look at the bottom. Y'all see this bottom right here? Look at this. Y'all see how it's black? It's a little, little, little um, line going right and left. If I hold down and I, and, I, and I push out, I can widen my chart like that. Or I can drag it in like that. Or like that, right? So in this particular case, let me redo it. I'm gonna reset my chart. Let me go here. Let me plus plus and zoom in, right? Drag this over. Let me make this like wider like that so I can see it, right? And I can do that. I'm just saying this because this is the thing, guys. You can't trade unless your visual is like, unless you can clearly see a trade idea like this. Like this is very important, okay? Another thing, let me let me drag it down. So, you, so with Hourglass, guys, with our, as you guys can see, look at this. It says time ago, less than a minute ago. It just, it just spit out a new trade. It just spit out a new trade. Now look, so now that we got that, um, you have three boxes, write this down. You have three boxes when it comes to hourglass. So with hourglass, you have a total of five confirmations. You have five confirmations. You need at least three out of five to take a trade. You need at least three out of five confirmations in order to take a trade. You have, and you have three boxes on the screen. You have box number one, box number two, and box number three, when I go to my chart, I want to, you see, look, look at this. Look at my screen, y'all. As I go down, I can fix this. You see how I got that up and down arrow? Let me, let me drag this up. Let me make, my, make that a little thicker. Now let me go down. Let me keep dragging down slow. Boom, right here. Make this up like that. So now it's like thicker, right? So now I can clearly see my, now I can clearly see my chart like that. I can clearly see my trade just like that, right? So write this down, guys. Always fix your visual before y'all even take a trade. If you don't fix your visual, you're not gonna be good, all right? Next thing, on the side, on the side, oh, another thing. So we're on a five minute time frame. That's why I say 5M. And say the currency pair right here, AUD, JPY, this is the currency pair. But look, all of these little boxes right here, these are called candlesticks. These are called candlesticks. Every single candlestick takes five minutes to form. So that means that, yeah, every candlestick takes five minutes to form. That's why we on a five minute time frame. All these little candlesticks takes five minutes to form. After five minutes, it gives you another candlestick, new candlestick, new candlestick, and it do it all day because the market never closes, guys, right? So next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. Oh, so when you, so... Write this down. In box number one, you have three confirmations in box number one. Box number one, you have three confirmations. Box number two, you have one confirmation. Box number three, you have one confirmation. So three in box number one, one in box number two, and one in box number three. You need at least three confirmations to take the trade, okay? So, cool. If it makes sense, drop a two. We almost done, y'all. Once y'all get it, y'all gonna be good, I promise you.
All right, dope. So look, we let's, let's let's get it. So what's next? So what's next is this. So in box number one, the first thing that you're looking for, and I'm gonna break this down. Once y'all get it, y'all gonna get it. I want y'all to really write this down. So in box number one, first confirmation you're looking for is this. If you don't have this, you don't even look at the trade. It don't even get your attention. See, I'm programming y'all to um to to think success right off the bat. So the mistakes that I made, guess what? My ceiling is gonna be off floor. So y'all like coming in like at the like like that. So I'm saying you don't have to make the same mistakes. So you're looking for a score. If it's a if it's a put, it's, if it's a put, it's gonna say put score. If it's a call, it's gonna say call score. So you're looking for a score of four and above. If it does not have a score of four and above, it does not get your attention. You don't even look at it, right? You need a score of four and above. That's the first confirmation. Second confirmation. Let me let me let me find a currency. Bro. So look, I just went to this. I just went to this trade. Let me let me zoom in. Let me let me let me zoom in like this. Boom. Fix my fix my thing. Like just like that. So you're looking for a score of four and above. So this is a call. It says call score three. I don't want to get in on that. Looking for a score four and above. So that's the first confirmation. The second confirmation is this. If it's a call, if it's a call, you see this little uh, green line at the bottom? These green lines at the bottom like this. Y'all see this? This is called a support. This is called a support. Think of, uh, think of the floor that you're standing on that, as a support. If I'm dribbling a basketball, the ball is going to bounce off the ground and bounce back up, right? That's called a support. You see what I'm saying? So think of support as a floor. Whenever the market touches, see, whenever the market price touches, whenever the candlestick touches the green line, it's going to touch it and go back up. It's like gravity. The law of gravity states what's down, what's up must come what? Down. That's a law. That's a law when it comes to this. Uh, whenever the uh, candlestick touches the Green support, if it's a call, it's going to go back up. So that's the second confirmation. Um, if it's a call, you're looking for a score four and above. Second, you're looking for the candlestick to first, write this down. If it's a call, the candlestick is going to first open up. When it opens up, it's going to first go down. It's going to go down to touch the green support. And when it touches it, it's going to go up the remainder of the time. So within the first minute to two minutes of that new trade idea being open, like, like this, you're looking for the candlestick to first go down and touch the green support right here. And then when it touches it, guess what? Get in, write that down. Get in, when it touches it, it's going to go back up. It's like a rubber band. Like if I'm pulling it back, it's going boom like that. Because if you get in within the first minute to two minutes, I'm sorry, go ahead. Somebody said something. Okay. All right, bet. So that's the support. Vi hey, vice versa if it's a put. If it's vice versa if it's if, if, if it's a put. Um, if it's a put, you're looking for the candlesticks to open up and go up first before it goes down. When you get a second, what is the difference between a red? Oh, so no, it's it's no different. So the, the red candlestick is just an indication that it's going down. The blue candlestick is just an indication that it's going to go up. That's it. If that makes sense. Yeah, no problem. So, yeah, if it's a call, you're looking for the candlestick to first do this. If it's a call, you're looking for the candlestick to open up. And when it open up, you're looking for it to come down and touch that green support within the first minute to two minutes. Guys, if it opens up and, and it goes down first, guess what? The remainder of the time is going to be shooting up like that. I promise you. I promise you. Within the first minute to two minutes of that candlestick being open, you're looking for it to go down to touch that green support. When it touches it, it's going to start shooting up. Like this one, this is a bad trade. It's a three. The candlestick now open up and it started going up first. This is not a good trade idea right here. Not a good one. A vice versa if it's a put. If it's a put, y'all see, y'all see the y'all see these red lines at the top. It's called a resistance. Yeah, blue call. The, the candlesticks right here. The blue, blue, blue is uh equivalent to call. 
red is equivalent to put. But yeah, guys, if it's a, a put, if it's a put, um, no, no problem. So if it's a put, that means we expecting it to go down. That means that within the first minute to two minutes of the candlestick being open, it's gonna come up and touch my resistance. Boom. When it touches it, it's gonna drop. Look at this. Every time it went up, drop. Went up, drop. Same thing with the support. Look, every time the candlestick touched the support, it went up. 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 So basically, within the first minute to two minutes of the candle open, up and down. Yes, 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 yes. So if it's a call, if it's a call and it's a four, you're looking for the candlestick to open up and go down first. It's, it, it's going down because it has to touch the what? The support. And, and if it touches the support, you get in because that means the remainder of the three to four to five minutes of the candlestick is going to be going what? It's going to be going up. You see what I'm saying? You're doing, um, you're, it's time-based trading, right? So when you, when you get in like that, guys, you're going to win every time like clockwork. That's it. That's all. It's going down so you can get in low and then it's going to shoot up the remainder of the time. That's why I say you want to get in within the first minutes, two minutes if it's doing that. So look, I'm going to try to find a good, good one, but I hope that made sense. And then my third confirmation is what? My third confirmation is this Bowler Japan. So look. Yeah, no problem. No problem, y'all. So look, my third confirmation is this. My third confirmation, this is called a Bowler Japan. Y'all see like, so y'all see the support and resistance, but y'all see this little squiggly line in between here? This is called like a Bowler Japan. This is a third confirmation in the first box. If the candlestick not only comes down and touch my support, but it touches my Bowler Japan too, it's really going up. This is just extra, extra, extra co confirmation. That's it. This is extra confirmation. If it touches my like so Bowler Japan, like under, underneath, and it's the thing, the Bowler Japan, don't even worry about it. Just put BB. Just put BB, Bowler Japan, BB. If, if the candlestick, the, uh, the Bowler Japan will always be underneath the support and always be above the resistance. If it even touches your Bowler Japan, beyond your support is really going to go up 100%. It's like really going to go up 100%. This just extra confirmation. So expect so if you have a 4 and a candlestick and if it's a call it touches the support and Bollinger Japan, put it in for a 1 minute. Put it See this is the thing. Guys, when I'm using hourglass, I like to do 1 minute trades. Like y'all can figure out what y'all like best, 2 minutes, 3 minutes stuff like that, but me I like doing one minute trades, one and two minute trades, really one, because I like to get in and get out. Because if I'm getting in for a one minute trade, um, when the candlestick first opens up, that means the remainder of the time is gonna be shooting up. You see what I'm saying? So as it starts shooting up, I'm, I'm not gonna lose a trade. Like an example, look at this. Not a good trade, but the candlestick opened up. It started going down first, but look what is about, it's about to go up the remainder of the time. See, look, <clears throat> look, it opened up, it went down. And now look, the remainder of the time is three minutes and 22 seconds left on this candlestick. It's shooting up, it's shooting up. Look, keep watching, it. it's gonna keep shooting up. The candlestick opened up, this is not a good trade. I wouldn't have got in on this trade, but it opened up, it went down first and the remainder of the time is gonna shoot up. And this is the thing guys, write this down. On every single candlestick, you're going to see something called a wick in a body. The wick is the skinny part. The body is the thick part. Every candlestick has a body and a wick. So what happens is when it opens up, it's going to open up and go down first because it's going to create a small wick. It's going to create a small wick right here, right? The moment you see that wick being created within the first minute to two minutes, guys, get in. You're not going to lose a trade. You're not going to lose a trade. You're not going to lose a trade. That, the only reason why it either goes up or down is to create a wick. It, it always goes from wick, body, wick. Like wick, body, wick. It does it every time. So that wouldn't be a good trade because of the score. Because the um, you said put score, call score. It's put if it's a sale. It's call if it's a... Um, Bye.
But this won't be a good one because it's a three. This won't be a good one if it's a three. And look, this is a thing. I'm gonna show y'all. Let me let me let me look at another one. I hope this is making sense. If this making sense, drop a three. I'm not done yet. I'm just like, I'm yeah, we almost. You're talking about Eurocad. Look at Freddie. <laughs> he already on it. Eurocad. So look, 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 look. Okay, cool. Check this out. Keep watching, y'all. Keep watching. I know y'all want to do it yourself, but keep watching me. Look, look, look. So I'm zoomed in. This trade is too late. Why is this a bad trade, guys? It's a bad trade. It's because it's one minute left. Look, how do I know how much time left on the candlestick? Look, look at this, guys. On this side right here, it's about 59 seconds left. Right here, it's about 59 seconds left. That's how, no much, how much time left into the new candlestick, right? So look, if this was a fresh trade, I'm looking for a score of four and above. I got my bowler to ban. And this, within the first minute to two minutes, if it's a call, you're looking for the candlestick to open up. Look at this. You're looking for the candlestick to open up, go down. It's going to touch the green support because, and then it's going to turn around and continue to go up. That's it. When it touches it, you get in for a one minute to two minute trade, one minute to two minute trade. And when it comes down, guys, it's going to create something called a wick. It only opens up and goes down to create a wick. What a wick is, what a wick is, is this, the skinny part. Look at this right here. Look at this, y'all. Look at my screen. Y'all see this wick? Wick, body, wick. Wick, body, wick. So look, look at this. So the candlestick is opened up. It's opened up. Y'all see that wick? Y'all see that skinny part? Look at that wick. It opened up. It came down. It touched the support and Bowler Japan. I will get in for a buy. This would be okay. So look, it's about four minutes left. I would get in for a one minute or two minute back. It opened up and it touched, what time is it? Oh. So I'm gonna be patient. So that's what y'all looking for guys. I'm not done yet, but look, you're looking for it to open up and come down and touch that within the first minute to two minutes. Let's just be patient. It's about four minutes left on the candlestick. Let's see what happens. It's four minutes left. I'm going to call out some trades too. I just, I just want to give you guys an example. But I'm going to call out some trades too. I forgot to say, guys, the best time to use hourglass is early in the morning between 7 and 12, and then at nighttime after 7 p.m. To, to midnight. That's the best time to use it. It's not good to use it in the middle of the day, like in the afternoon, because uh, it, it is going to go super slow. You see fours and above early in the morning, you guys can take it before y'all go to school, or you can do it at nighttime. So this would be a good trade, but... The mark is playing around right now, um, 100%. It's not even going up, so it's okay. So that's that. So that's the first three confirmations in box number one. First three confirmations. So that's three confirmations. The next confirmation is this. If it's a call, you, you look at the second box. You're looking for this black line to point up. If it's a call, you need this black line to point up or either like slant up or like point up to get in. So this is not a good one right here. Why? Because it's, it's calling out for a call, but yet the candlestick is going down and then this is pointing down. So this won't be a good trade because this not pointing up, right? So if you, if you see these black, this black line right here, slanted up or pointed up, that's your indication. That's the indication that you get in. And then the third box right here, same thing. If this black line is slanted up or pointed up, that's your indication that you're getting in. That's it. So let me show y'all what this actually looks like in action. So look, it's about, look at this, look at this, look at this. 
Let's give it a second. So as this continue to push up, look at this, y'all. As this continue to push up, y'all see how this black line is like slanted up and it's ready, it's getting ready to push up. That's what I mean, guys. But this um is not good to get in right now because it's about two minutes left. Yep. Cool. So let me look for another one. I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. When y'all go to it, make sure y'all fix y'all thing, y'all visual. Same thing, if it's a put, if it's a put, if it's a put, you're looking for these two black lines to point down. You're looking for these two black lines to, to point down. If it's a put, that's this confirmation that it's just gonna go down. You wanna get in within the first minute to two minutes of, this, of it actually being open. Um, the reason I say that is because uh, HFX is time-based trading. And if you get in within the first minute to two minutes, that means the remainder of that five minutes of the candlestick, the remainder of the time is going to be going in your direction. So let's say I get in for a put, meaning I expect in the market, the candlestick to go down. If I get in within the first minute to two minutes, that means that I'm expecting the candlestick to first open up go up first to touch my resistance right here. And when it touches it, I'm going to get in for a put. Why? Because that means the remainder of the time is going to be dropping down and that the market is going to be going in my favor. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to show you what it looks like in action. I'm going to show you what it looks like in action. No, nah, no problem. No problem. No problem. So look, we got about 15 seconds left, guys. Pay attention. 15 seconds left. No problem. So 15, 10 seconds left. Pay attention. So just look at how I do it, y'all. Look at how I do it. Watch this. Look at how I do it. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Four is and above. Looking for four is and above, four is and above. Look at my screen. Look how I'm clicking through them. Four is and above. Four is and above. I said three. Five. This is a five. So let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. Let me zoom in. Sheesh. Is this a good one? Yes, this would have been a good one. This would have been a good one. This, why, why would this be a good one? Because look, let me zoom in. Y'all see a wick at the bottom? Look at that skinny wick. Yes, y'all see that wick? what I tell y'all? When it first opens up, it's gonna open up and go down first to create a wig, it created the wig. And now what it's doing now is pushing up. And because it's pushing up, look at this. You see how this pointing up, that's pointing up. Now look at how everything else shooting up. So if you would have got in when it first created that wick within a minute to two minutes, you would be winning right now. You would not lose your trades. You're not gonna lose any trades. Look, look at that wick. Y'all see the wick body? It goes wick, body, wick, look. Wick, body, wick. Wick, body, it ain't create the wick on the other side. But look, if you would have got in, look how this pointing up and look how this pointing up. That's, that's, that would have that been about five confirmations. The score was four, yeah, it just changed to three, but as long as you see that four at the beginning, you good. And look how much time left. It's about three minutes left on this candlestick. So you would have already been out of your trade if you put it in for a minute. If this making sense to y'all, drop a three in the chat box if this is making sense. Drop a three in the chat box if this is making sense. If you confused, let me know. If y'all confused, speak up. Anybody confused, speak up. If you're confused, Fred, Freddie is, oh, I know his laptop, his computer's sleeping. Yeah, yeah. So look, look. So, dang, Fred, Fred, Fred won two trades so far. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So, Jamari, what are you not understanding? So I'll break this down again. I'll break this down again. So look, if it's a call, the same thing for a call, same thing for a put. Call means what? Up. So look, 
You see, you look at this, y'all. Look at this. Y'all, y'all see this like blue line right here? This tells you what a current market price is. And next to it, you have like a, a timer. The timer always starts from five minutes and it, and it counts its way down. So what that means is if it's a call, you're looking for a score of four and above. If you see a score of four and above, boom. Confirmation one. Confirmation two. Within a, So when every candlestick opens up, if it's a call, you're looking for the candlestick to open up and go down first. It has to go down and touch like what? Your support or your Bollinger Band. And when it touches one of these, you get in for a one minute or a two minute call. One minute or two minute call on your, on your trading account. And when you get in for a one minute to two minute call, within the first minute to two minutes of that candlestick being open, guess what it's gonna do the remainder of the three minutes? Bro, it's gonna be shooting up like this. It's gonna be shooting up like that, right? And this is the thing. You will also see the, it, it, also when you're looking to get in, you're looking to see if both of these lines right here is pointing up. It'll either be slanted up or pointed up. That's it. That's it. If it's a buy, just, just, just expect, like if it's a call, you're just looking for this line to be slanted up or pointed up like this, slanted up or pointed up like this, um, because they gonna all go hand to hand. They all like follow after, after, after each other. Um, I hope that made sense. Vice versa, if it's a put, if it's a put, you were expecting it to go down. So that means that if it's a put, right? I'm looking for the candlestick to go up to touch my what? My rare resistance line first. And then when it touches that, I get in because it's gonna be going down the remain of the time. Now, I'm, I'm gonna show y'all again. I'm gonna show y'all again. So look, it's about, I'm gonna start at the top. It's about five seconds left. I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna work my way down. Hey, Jamari, uh, don't overdo it, bro. Don't overtrade. Do not overtrade. Do not overtrade. Don't overtrade. So look, less than a minute ago, y'all, less than a minute ago. Let me scroll down. I'm looking for fours and above. Fours and above. Fours and above. Fours and above. If I don't see no four, I don't get in. Oh, this is a five. Sheesh. Sheesh, hold on. It's a five. So look, 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 look. So within the first minute to two minutes, did it come down and touch my support and bowler Japan? Yes. Yes. So that means I can get in for, I can get in. I can get in. Within the first minute to two minutes, look, y'all see how it came down. Y'all see that wick? The moment y'all see that wick, get in, get in. Y'all see how this, okay, this is slanted up. This is slanted up. It's about three minutes and 50 seconds left on this candlestick. So that means that the remainder of the time, we are supposed to be expecting this to go up. Sometimes the market do tweak 100%, but um, that's, a just, that's just a confirmation. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all another one, because that's, I'm gonna show y'all another one. I'm gonna show y'all another one. That, that, that's a sweet. Okay, that's the score of a one. This is a three. Okay, this is a five. Okay, okay, cool. So this is a score of a five. Yes, it's a five, but look, you see how this pointed down and that's pointed down. I would not get into I would not get into this trade because this pointed down and this pointed down. Yes, it's saying it's a score, it's a call because it's green and it's a five. But look, this pointed down and that pointed down. Nope, if I get in, I'm gonna lose that trade. That's a two. That's a one. Okay, this is a four. So look guys, this is a four, but you see how this is pointed down and this pointed down? Nope, not a good trade. Yes, it's at my support in Boulder Japan, but this is pointed down and this pointed down. I'm not gonna get into that trade. Nope. That's a one. So yeah, sometimes when you look, when you guys looking at trades, um, if you like on hourglass and you don't see like good trades within 15 minutes, 
just get off of it, close it, and then just check it again later. Please, like, write that down. If you don't see good trade, like, fours and above within the first 10 to 15 minutes, close it out and, and just get on it later. Don't be on this all day. Don't be on it for an hour, two hours, no. If you don't see good fours and above, your confirmation, fours and above. If you don't see fours and above within the first 10 to 15 minutes, close it out, check it later. Um, questions, does anybody have questions at all so far? Any questions? Any questions, please tell me. Okay, Willow said no, Fred said no. Talk to me. What about you, Jamari? Do you have any questions, bro? I let, let me know, let me know, because I'm gonna make sure y'all get this, this week, 100%. Hold on. Now, I, I feel like it's more so y'all just applying it. What time did you say? Oh, so the best times to use this is between, really, like, if y'all, like, up around, like, three in the morning, I'm gonna tell you this, between the hours of, like, 7 p.m. at nighttime, all the way to noon the next day. Like if y'all up two, three, four in the morning, yo, the best time to trade really like early, early in the morning. But y'all be having, y'all be sleep. But any, any between that time frame, between 7 p.m. at night and then noon the next day. Other than that, in the afternoon, it's super slow, super, super slow in the afternoon. But yeah, so. That's pretty much that. What else I want to say, y'all? Uh, I think there's one more thing I want to say, y'all. Uh. So y'all can use it. Like, guys, when y'all really get the hang of it, like, um, don't overdo it. Like, don't overtrade. Like, please, don't overtrade. It's something I want to teach y'all real quick. Give me one second. I want to teach y'all something real quick. Yeah, I'm about to go over that right now, bro. Trust me. Give me one second, y'all. One second. One second. Wow, why did I just log me out? That's so weird. Okay, cool. Uh, so I'm about to hop on on my phone and show y'all something real quick. I'm about to teach y'all some risk management real quick. Uh, Chris, I'm gonna send this to your phone. And Chris, send this to them too. Okay. Yeah, because uh, what y'all doing is uh, y'all trading, but y'all don't y'all don't y'all don't like know what y'all goal is. So y'all don't want y'all just to be doing hourglass all day. I gotta teach y'all something real quick. Cause I don't want y'all to be how I was. Like I was just trading just to trade. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You got it, Chris. Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. Uh, Willow, I'm gonna have her mail send this to you right now. And I'm about to go over this with y'all right now. So now that y'all understand how to make money, now last thing I wanna teach y'all is something called risk management. Risk management, guys. Um, because what's the point of learning how to trade if you don't even understand money management, right? Very important. So let me hop on. Let me hop on Zoom. On my phone. I haven't did a call like 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 hourglass call like this in a minute. This is going on YouTube. Recording in progress. 
Okay. Okay, bet, bet, bet. Can y'all see my screen? Yo. Can y'all see, see my screen? Yeah. yeah. All right, bet. So check this out, check this out, check this out. So yeah, so yeah, pretty much, Um, I'm gonna go over risk management with y'all. Follow me, listen to me, or what I'm about to say. Like, listen. So... But write this down before you guys even think about trading, you need to already know how much money you walk in. in the this is the thing the best hustlers have the best exit strategies. See, the best hustlers never go into a game, go, go, go into an industry, go into the game without even knowing they, they exit strategy. So, the best hustlers have, have the best exit strategies, right? Because if you don't even have a game plan, if you don't plan to win, you're going to plan to fail. That's a fact. So um, an example, I'm going to give you guys an example. Let's say I have $500 on my account. And y'all going to pull up y'all calculator. So money management is this. You're risking. So you know when you guys go to um, your brokerage account, it tell you like how much money you want to like uh, put per trade. Like, you know, when it says like amount on y'all brokerage account, if you got IQ cent or Vi Forex, it tell you how much money you want to risk. And then it says call and put. Well, check this out. Um, you're going to be risking 3% of your account per trade. So when you press call, call, put, put, and you take and use an hourglass to take your trade ideas, you're going to already know how much money you're going to be risking before you even start trading. If you look. If you practice the principles, you're gonna you're gonna live in a promise. The principles sim simplify life. If you do not get this, guys, my biggest lesson in trading, I learned how to trade, but I was not honoring risk management, guys. I will blow so many accounts. 18 years old, lost over ten thousand dollars. 18 years old because I learned how to trade, but I wasn't honoring risk management. You see what I'm saying? So I don't want y'all to go through what I went through. Y'all should never have to fund y'all trading account ever, never, if you follow these. So you're going to risk 3% of your account for each trade. You're going to put that in the amount on your HFX trading account. So what does that mean? I'm going to show y'all. Look at that. So what, what that mean is, I, let's say I have a balance of $500. If I have a balance of $500, um, I'm going to put my balance in my calculator I'm going to times it by what? 3%. And I'm going to press what? Equal. So that means that per trade, I'm going to be risking $15 per trade. That seems simple, right? So per trade, I'm going to be risking $15 per trade. Let's say if I have $200 on my account, if I have $200 on my HFX account, I'm going to do times 3% equals $6. So that means I will be doing $6 per trade. If that makes sense, drop a one in the chat box, right? I'm not going to go fast. I want to make sure y'all understand this. Drop a one in the chat box if that makes sense. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Dope. Fred, does that make sense? Okay. I, okay, cool. I'm just making sure. Cool, that's that. That's that. I'm just telling y'all this so y'all can be able to trade forever, okay? Because if y'all y'all learn this, y'all will never have to work a job. I haven't worked a job since I was 18. I'm about to turn 22 Friday. So five years. So look, um, your goal for the day is to make 8%. Write that down. So y'all ain't got to write it down right here. So your goal for the day is to make 8%. So when you make 8%, um, when you make 8%, guys, that's when you stop trading. So look, if I have $500 times 8%, so that means when I make $40 for the day, I stop trading. I stop trading, stop trading. If I have $200 times 8%, boom. When I make $16, stop trading, stop trading, right? Very important. Cool, so that's your goal. Let's say, and then it says this, the total that you can risk on your account for the day is 5%. So I can total risk on my account 5% for the day. If I lose my 5%, stop trading for the day. 
I'm trying to save y'all so y'all don't trade all day because the goal is this. The goal is to wake up another day and have money in your account to keep trading for the rest of your life. See, it's called investing, guys. Think about this. Investors live off of their money. See, when you have $10, you have 10 employees. $100, you have 100 employees. So I want y'all to look at the money in y'all account. If you got $200 in there, you got 200 employees. Do you want to like over leverage your account and do a $50 trade and, and like and lose like half of your account like that? See, you want to live off of your money. So that's why you have to be smart. That's why you have to uh, follow these principles. Because if not, if you don't know how to manage a $100 account, you can't manage a thousand. If you can't manage a thousand, you definitely can't manage the $10,000 account. I know that. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling y'all. So understand this. So let's say this. Let's say I have a $500 account times 5%. So that's $25. So what I'm going to do is this. Oh, snaps. Okay, 500 minus 25. So when your account balance dropped to 475, stop trading for the day. That's your 5% loss. Well, let's say you have $200 times 5%. That's $10. So when your account balance dropped to 190, stop trading for the day. See, in order to, and it says this, in order to blow your whole account, you will have to lose 20 trades in a row. It will take you losing 20 trades in a row, risking 5% to blow your whole account. So guess what? Yeah, for you to blow your whole account, you have to lose 20 trades in a row using risk management, right? So I'm gonna tell y'all this. Um, if y'all, as y'all continue to grow y'all account, let's say you get your account to a thousand, right? What's eight times eight percent for the day? Let's say eight percent of a thousand a day is like eighty dollars a day. Let's say you trade it for like thirty days straight, eighty times thirty. Boom, that's twenty four hundred dollars. Guess what? Let's say you did, that's 30 days. Let's say you did it for 60 days, right? So times 8% was, that's $192 a day. Let's say you did that for 30 days straight times 30. Boom, your account grows to $55,760. That's it's just 60 days. Now let's, let's think about 90 days times 8% a day. Okay, that's $460. Do that for 30 days straight. That's $13,824. It's, it, that's the power of compound interest. Let me do one more for y'all. Let's say you have five, like 200 in your account times 8%. That's $16 a day times that by 30. Boom, that's $480 profit. Okay, that's 30 days. Let's say you do it for another 60 days times 8%. That's $38 times 30. Boom, that's 1,152. That's going into 60 days. Let's, now let's talk about like 90 days times 8% a day. That's $92 a day. Do that for 30 days straight. That's $2,764, right? I'm gonna do one more for y'all. Let's say you have, and that was only with $200. Let's say you do it with $500 times 8%, because the goal is to make 8% a day. That's $40. Let's say you, you know, do that for 30 days straight. Your account is at 1,200. Let's, okay, let's say you do that for another 30 days straight. Times 8%, that's $96 a day. Times that by 30, that's $2,880 after 60 days. Now let's say you do it for another 30 days. Times 8% a day. That's $230 a day, a day, times that by 30. That's $6,912. And I say this because um, that's the power of compound interest, guys. And I'm trying to tell y'all, like, it don't matter what's in y'all account. It don't matter what's in y'all account right now, I promise you. Just um, to make 8% too, this is the thing. Let me unshut my screen. Um, to be able to make 8%, you only have to win three to four trades. If you win three to four trades today, you made your 8%. That's all you got to do. So when you wake up, hey, my goal is to win three to four trades today. If I win three to four trades, 
And guess what? You can do that within 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour. You only got to win three to four trades. And if it's, if you're putting in one minute, two minute trades, you're winning your trades like that, like that. So once you make your 8%, just stop trading. Okay. Because what I'm trying to get y'all to understand is this, if to develop a new habit, it takes 21 days to develop a new habit. If y'all just follow the directions and do what I'm telling y'all to do for 21 days straight, it's going to become a habit. So when a big money come, y'all want to really put like a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars in y'all account. What you do with a hundred dollars, you'll know how to do with a thousand. You know what you do with a thousand, you do with, with, with 10,000. It's just uh, making that become a habit. But I hope that made sense to y'all. If it made sense, drop a three in the chat box. If that made sense. If, uh, if it did not make sense, what do y'all need me to go over? If it did not make sense, I can go over anything. But I just want to show y'all the power of like and give y'all vision. So if, if you only like if you only have fifty dollars or hundred dollars to put in there, that's cool. You use that right now. Just build it up. And it's the thing: the money that's in your account now, guys, you don't have to fund your account no more. So if you make extra money, just stack your money. And later on, you want to put a couple more hundred dollars in your account? Do that because it's the thing: the more money that's in your account, the more money you will be able to make. Yeah, a day. But if you have a little money in your account, like $20, $30, $50, it's okay. But you're going to see small gains until you have more money in your account. Okay? Unless you just over leverage and like do like a $20 trade and you like you come up type stuff. But I don't recommend you doing that type stuff. But um, Fred said it's pretty easy. So that's everything, guys. You, you got Milly Mills. And it's a thing. And I'm going to be done. I promise you. If y'all got questions with anything at all, um, y'all can reach out to Chris. You can reach out to me. I'm willing to help. Like, guys, you know, y'all young. Like, I want to help y'all get this because if y'all learn this mindset, never going broke. Like, you got to ask yourself. Most of our parents not even understanding percentages and things like that, 100%. But when your mindset gets to understanding percentages, you're thinking like, millionaires that's the millionaire's mindset but um besides that um if you don't make money will go live you can make your money off of hourglass you don't make your money off of hourglass plug in to go live so y'all got ways to make money every day two streams yeah and later down the line if y'all don't like hfx y'all can get us a crypto y'all can get us a forex and um, it's way more money, way, way more ways, way more ways to earn money. Okay, but besides that, guys, thank y'all for taking y'all time out. I appreciate y'all time. I hope y'all got value. I will upload this call on YouTube, and I will send it to Chris so he can send to y'all. And from there, y'all can rewatch it if y'all need to. Uh, but I'm gonna see y'all at the uh, banks, and I'm gonna see y'all at the top.